Good morning. God's peace be with you now and forever. I am Laura Hargrove and these are our announcements. The Sunday missiles for the new liturgical year have arrived. You may purchase them after mass, so please see an usher or a social distancing ambassador as you leave church or stop by the rectory to purchase one. The cost is $5. Lectors, if you have not already done so, please pick up your workbook at church from the sacristy or stop by the rectory. Join the Knights of Columbus for a stop, drop, and roll Christmas toy drive on Saturday, December 5th and December 12th from 12 noon until 4 p.m. on our parking lot. If you are not able to attend and would like to donate a toy, you may bring it to the church and a fellow knight will be available to receive it. Toys will be collected until Sunday, December 13th. Contact David G., Renard Gardner, or any brother knight for more information. Thank you to everyone who supported the neighborhood's opposition to opening a convenience store at 626 Mount Holly Street. The owner withdrew the application and promised to work with the community in finding an acceptable use for the building. Funeral arrangements for Richard Williams, brother of Joel Williams, are as follows. Viewing at St. Bernardine's Church on Monday, November the 23rd from 5 to 8 p.m. Wake at St. Bernardine's on Tuesday, November 24th at 10 a.m followed by a funeral service at 10.30 a.m. Please keep the Williams family in your prayers. We are delighted to welcome those who have joined us in person today. We ask you to please be sure all electronic devices are silenced so that we may enjoy our time of worship together free from distractions. Thank you. And now, let us take a moment to focus on our prayerful presence our very reason for gathering to give thanks and praise to God. Let us also unite our prayers with those of our sister parish of St. John the Evangelist Church in Columbia, Maryland, as we call upon the power of the Holy Spirit. We invite those in the church to please stand. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy his consolations through Christ our Lord. Amen. For those who are joining us by live stream, please feel free to greet one another on the live chat as we listen to a previously recorded performance from our choir. is my shepherd and I shall not walk he maketh me to lie 
lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul, my soul. And he leadeth me into the path of the righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley, shadow of death. See, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they Comfort me, thou preparest the table before me, in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. House of my Lord, my King, my Master, I will dwell forever. I will dwell forever. I will dwell.
Amen. We come to praise thy name. We come to praise the name of the Lord Jesus. On this feast of Christ the King, King of the universe, we begin our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Well, good morning again, everyone. And welcome to St. Bernardine's Church and uh, our Sunday Mass. We welcome those of you who have been able to join us in person today and those of you who are joining us online. For those who may be new to us, I'm Father Rich Bozzelli. I'm the pastor here at St. Bernardine's. On behalf of myself and our entire church family, we welcome you to today's celebration. So we say that today is the Feast of Christ the King. It is the final uh, weekend of the liturgical year which means we start Advent next week, if you can believe that. But we come together, we end our year by acknowledging Christ as our King, the only one who has sovereignty over us, the one who rules our lives and our hearts. For the times, however, that we have failed to follow the rule of God, for the times that we have failed to allow Christ into our hearts, let us pause for a moment and ask for God's mercy and forgiveness. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Of 
Father, Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole creation, set free from slavery, may render your majesty service <clears throat> and ceaselessly proclaim your praise through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I, myself, will look after and tend my sheep. As a shepherd tends his flock, when he finds himself among his scattered sheep, so will I tend my sheep. I will rescue them from every place where they were scattered when it was cloudy and dark. I, myself, will pasture my sheep. I, myself, will give them rest, says the Lord God. The lost sheep I seek out. The strayed I will bring back. The injured I will bind up. The sick I will heal. But the sleek and the strong I will destroy, shepherding them rightly. As for you, my sheep, says the Lord, I will judge between one sheep and another, between rams and goats. The word of the Lord. The response is, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing. I shall sure want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. He guides me in right paths for his namesake.
You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the firstfruits of those who have fallen asleep. Since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life, but each one in proper order. Christ, the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. When everything is subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to the one who subjected everything to him, so that God may be all in all. The word of the Lord. My sisters and my brothers, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne, and all the nations will be assembled before him and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats he will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left then the king will say to those on his right come you who are blessed by my father Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. 
a stranger, and you welcomed me, naked, and you clothed me, ill, and you cared for me, in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of the least brothers or sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you accursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. A stranger, and you gave me no welcome. Naked, and you gave me no clothing. Ill, and in prison, and you did not care for me. Then they will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or ill, or in prison, and not minister to your needs? He will answer them, I, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did not do for one of these least ones, you did not do for me. And these will go off to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, good morning again, everyone. Just when you thought you couldn't become any more disgusted with failed leadership, just when you thought we might end a national nightmare through a presidential election, just when you thought new leadership would bring new hope to an unrelenting health crisis. Welcome to the United States 2020, where only half of our nation is fed up with what we've been enduring. Where even with new leadership, we may not go much beyond where we are right now. It's enough for anyone to give up on government leadership. In today's first reading from the prophet Ezekiel, we hear how God is fed up with government leaders. We'll be reading from chapter 34 of the prophet Ezekiel. Now, to appreciate what God is saying through the prophet, we need a little historical background. Centuries before Ezekiel, the Israelites had pleaded with God to give them a king, which troubled God because he felt that only he should be their king. But the Israelites insisted. 
They wanted a king just like every other nation had a king. And God relented, appointing Saul the first king of Israel, who then gave way to David, who then turned the crown over to Solomon. And after that, it all fell apart. Israel divided into two kingdoms, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. And their rulers were unfaithful and corrupt. Eventually, the northern kingdom was conquered by the Assyrians. The Assyrians were conquered by the Babylonians. And the Babylonians conquered all of Israel and sent the people into exile. And that's where we pick up with the prophet Ezekiel. The people are suffering in exile, and God, through his prophet, expresses God's disgust for the leaders of Israel. In the passage immediately preceding the one that we read as our first reading today, God says this, and listen with an ear toward contemporary events. Woe to the shepherds of Israel who have been pasturing themselves. Should not shepherds pasture the flock? You consumed milk, wore wool, and slaughtered fatlings. But the flock you did not pasture. You did not strengthen the weak, nor heal the sick, nor bind up the injured. You did not bring back the stray or seek the lost, but ruled them harshly and brutally. So much of the calamity that the people were experiencing came from failed and corrupt leadership. Sound familiar? And in many ways, the people had brought it upon themselves because much to God's dismay, they demanded that God give them a human king. And once they had their king, the leaders and even some of the people allowed corruption and infidelity to take over, with many choosing to look the other way. Nothing we know about today. And so for God, there could only be one solution. And that's where our first reading from today picks up. Thus says the Lord, I myself will look after and tend my sheep. I myself will pasture my sheep. I myself will give them rest, says the Lord. God is hot. God is furious. And yet, God is loving. The only way out of the mess the people find themselves in is for God himself to get them out of it. The lost I will search out, the stray I will bring back, the injured I will bind up, and the sick I will heal. God will rebuild his kingdom on the lost, the stray, the injured, and the sick, on the hungry, the thirsty, the naked, the imprisoned. 
God will not turn his kingdom over to the rich and powerful and the arrogant. The kingdom of God will be founded on the least of our brothers and sisters because God promised that he would be there for them always. And that kingdom exists even to this day whenever the friends of God bring about God's promise of love and care to the neediest among us. Whenever people serve those needs, they begin to live in the kingdom of God. And whenever they fail to serve those needs, they choose to live apart from the kingdom of God. So at the final judgment, which we hear in today's gospel, the king separates the nations and condemns those on his left, not because he wants to punish those who fail to love their brothers and sisters. It's not because the king no longer loves those he separates out. He does love them. He loves all of his children. And it hurts to have to separate them some to his right and some to his left. But the king has to separate out the ones who fail to feed and to clothe and to welcome and to visit, the ones who fail to serve the least of their brothers and sisters, because they are the ones who have chosen to live apart from the kingdom of God. And at the final judgment, the king has no other option but to respect their choice. The final judgment is really just a matter of ratifying the choices that we have made throughout our lives, once and for all. Because our choices matter. For as hard as this pandemic has been for the last year, for as difficult as our politics have been for the last four years, for as intolerable as racial injustice in our country has been for the last four centuries, God has not abandoned his people. God continues to build his kingdom right here and now. And God continues to build that kingdom on the least of our brothers and sisters and, invoice, and invites us to join in that kingdom. Sure, we need to work to elect public officials who will enact legislation to feed the hungry, provide health care for the sick, and to welcome the immigrant. And we need to hold our public officials accountable for those things. But make no mistake, the kingdom of God will not be brought about by our public officials. God gave up on that idea long ago. Amen? No, if we want to live in the kingdom of God ourselves, then we have to make the choices that build our lives around the least of our brothers and sisters because that's where the kingdom of God exists. That's where God promises to be. One of the most heartening things about this pandemic has been how so many in our church family have continued to reach out to others in need in the midst of our own challenges. We're grateful for the parishioners who make hundreds of sandwiches each week, which means that since this summer, we have fed thousands of individuals. Yesterday morning, volunteers distributed another hundred boxes of fresh food to our neighbors, not because the government gave us the food, but because a wholesale food distributor in Howard County stepped up to donate the food that our government has cut back on. We're working with Mount St. Joe's High School to continue our Christmas basket program, but we're assembling and distributing those baskets over the course of a week in order to ensure safe social distancing. 
So stay tuned. Denise may be in touch for more volunteers than in the past. And we've even received a challenge from a donor to consider how we might expand our outreach to parishioners and neighbors in need, which they'll be willing to fund for a ge very generous amount. During COVID, I've asked all of our ministries, especially those who can't function in this period of time, to consider what they might do as an outreach project as service to those in need, even if it's just taking up a collection from among them and supporting our charity. None of these efforts in themselves is going to solve the problems of the world. And yes, we must always be mindful of challenging and changing structures that keep people poor and oppressed. But the hungry, the thirsty, the stranger, the naked, the ill, and the imprisoned are the foundation of the kingdom that God builds. When we get up, when we get caught up in the political failings of our leaders, it is they who are the ones who keep it real. The poor, the imprisoned, the stranger, the sick. They are the ones who remind us that God is present among them. For as the king himself says, whatever you do for the least of my brothers and sisters, you do for me. If you think you're fed up with the failure of our leadership, just imagine how God feels. And yet in the midst of it all, God has not abandoned his people. In fact, God only recommits himself to us all the more. Not despite our failed leadership, but because of our failed leadership. I myself will look after and tend my sheep. I myself will pasture them. That's not the refrain of a God who's given up on his people. It's the promise of a God who calls his people not to look to their leaders to find him, but to look to the least among them. For the lost I will search out, the stray I will bring back, the injured I will bind up, and the sick I will heal. For whatever you do, for the least of these brothers and sisters, you do for me. Amen. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident in Christ's presence among us, let us now place our needs before our loving God. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that in times of chaos and confusion, we may be confident that Christ will defeat all evils and lead us to fullness of life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all newly elected leaders, that they may follow their example of Jesus, who served those in needs, reached out to those who were forgotten, and never used his authority for his own benefit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in society who are suffering, forgotten, or marginalized, that God will inspire us to shepherd them, heal their wounds, and lead them to fuller and more fruitful lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who will not be able to celebrate the holidays with their loved ones due to COVID, that God will preserve them from harm and bless them for their vigilance in keeping others safe, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, that their hearts may comprehend the depths of human suffering and the needs for food, clean water, safety, and health care, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our president and our pope, that God will give them the grace to accept the truth, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the canonization of Venerable Henrietta DeLille, Venerable Father Augustus Tolton, Servant of God, Sister Tia Bowman, and Servant of God, Mother Mary Lang, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to marriage, priesthood, diaconate, and religious life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, especially those on our prayer list, those with COVID-19, and those who have been in the hospital recently, including Joe Fajardo, Rick Ramsey, Bernie Menes, Eugene Sweet, Connor Martin, that the healing love of God will touch them, strengthen them, and bring them to wholeness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have lost their lives through war or deliberate acts of violence, including those killed in Baltimore City recently, John Paul Noel, 39, Justin Owanhu, 33, Bria White, 26, and for all who have died, especially Richard Williams, brother of Joel Williams, Wayne Edward Watkins, Jr., on the fourth anniversary of his passing, Floyd Henderson, on the 12th anniversary of his passing, Elmer Shepherdson, on the 37th anniversary of his passing, and the souls of all the faithful departed whom we remember in a special way this month of November, that they may rest eternally in the peace of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear the prayers that we place before you, those we have spoken, those that are on our live chat, those that remain in our hearts. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and fill us with your life and your love. Guide us in your way and keep us in your care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
As men and women of faith, we know that our giving is an act of our faith. Thus, we can dare to be generous to care for all God's children. There will be two collections a day. The first is our weekly offertory for the support of our parish ministries. The second is the annual collection for the Catholic Campaign for Human Development. For those in church today, you may deposit your gifts in the basket on your way to communion. For those online, you may support our collection by mailing or dropping off donations to the rectory or by giving online at our website, www.stbernardinechurch.org. Thank you for your faithful, faithful commitment to Christian stewardship through the tithing of your time, talent, and treasure. Pray, my sisters and my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the may Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. 
For you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness, as eternal priest and King of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption, and making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended jesus took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and William our Bishop, the clergy, the religious, and all your dear people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Bernardine, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, 
and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us how to pray. So now with confidence, we call upon our God, saying, Our, our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will, will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Thank you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those unable to participate in Holy Communion today, we offer this prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. For those who have joined us in person today, we uh, ask that you follow the 
instructions of the ushers and social distancing ambassadors on your way to the communion. We'll start with folks on the outer pews and then work our way to the inner pews. We'll invite you to come down by a single file down the center aisle. Please uh, maintain the appropriate distance uh, between you. Uh, keep your mask on until you come to receive Holy Communion, then you may remove it to consume the, the host and then replace it as you return to your pews. If you are not receiving communion today but would like to receive a blessing instead, we invite you to come forward and cross your arms across your chest so that the minister knows to give you a blessing. And if you are unable to come forward for Holy Communion, please notify an usher and a minister will bring Holy Communion to you.
morning again, church. That was a lovely, lovely rendition, and 
To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Again, just a few announcements. The church missiles for the new liturgical year have arrived. You may purchase them after Mass. Please send usher or a social distancing ambassador as you leave the church or stop by the rectory to purchase one. The cost is $5, no Dell Close discount. <laughs> old joke for the, for the old parishioners. Electors, if you have not already done so, please pick up your workbooks and missiles from the church sacristy or stop by the rectory. Uh, join the Knights of Columbus for a stop, drop, and roll Christmas toy drive on Saturday, December 5th and December 12th from 12 noon to 4 p.m. on our parking lot. If you are not able to attend and would like to donate a toy, you may bring it to the church and a fellow knight will be available to receive it. Toys will be collected until Sunday, December the 13th. Again, toys will be collected until Sunday, December 13th. Contact David G., Renard Gardner, or any brother knight for more information. Again, thanks to everyone who supported the neighborhood opposition to the opening of a convenience store at 626 Mount Holly Street. The owner withdrew his application and promised to work with our community. Amen. And finding an acceptable use for the building. Last but not least, uh, funeral arrangements for Richard Williams, brother of Joel Williams, are as follows. Viewing at St. Bernardine's Church on Monday, November the 23rd, 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Wake at St. Bernardine's on Tuesday, November the 24th at 10 a.m., followed by a funeral service at 10.30. Please, please keep the Williams family in your prayers. Amen and God bless you. <laughs> Thank you, Donald. Anybody celebrating a birthday this week? If so, would you please stand? Anybody celebrating a birthday? Let's see if there's anybody online. At, uh, Joe Odin Jr. is celebrating a birthday, and April Hawthorne. Um, well, that's an anniversary. We'll get there next. Uh, Yolanda Sharon has a birthday this week. Trina Carter, Felice Jones. So lots of birthdays coming over. So we want to wish them all a uh, happy birthday. Let's sing happy birthday to them. How about a wedding anniversary? Anybody celebrating an anniversary this week? Well, we have over here 10th anniversary to Joanne and Anthony Thomas. So happy anniversary to Joanne and Anthony. And uh, if there are other anniversaries out there, we uh, wish you a happy anniversary as well. If, if our birthdays will sing. If anybody's joining us for the first time in the church, they could uh, join us, stand as well. Uh, we'll offer you a, a prayer of blessing today and of welcome. So this is for all of our birthdays, our anniversaries, and, and our visitors, our first time viewers. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this day and this time together. We thank you for your presence in our lives and the sovereignty of which you govern us all. We praise you, dear Lord, on this feast of Christ the King, and we pray that we will always follow your way in all that we do. We thank you, Lord, for your presence, your love, your blessings to shower upon us each and every day. And we ask now, dear Lord, for a special blessing upon those who are joining us for the first time, those who are celebrating their birthdays and wedding anniversaries this week. We ask, dear Lord, that your Holy Spirit come upon them and fill them with your loving goodness you guide them according to your word, that you protect them from all harm, that you keep them always safe in your care. We thank you, Lord, for the year that has passed, and we look forward to the year that is to come. 
and we praise you always and give you all the glory for the love that you share with us through those whom we love here on earth. Continue to bless us and praise us, Lord, as we bless your name in the name of the Father and of the Son and of this Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, happy birthday. Happy birthday and happy anniversary and welcome to everyone. Um, also, this week is Thanksgiving, as you all know, and uh, we will be having Mass in the Hall uh, on Thanksgiving morning at 9.30. Uh, part of that is we're not sure if the heat will be back on, um, and uh, we are hoping, though, that that will happen this week. They've got everything except the piece that connects the, the unit to the ductwork, which is kind of important because... If you can't get the heat from out there into here, it doesn't work. Uh, but they're hoping they'll do that this week. And so maybe, God willing and the crick don't rise, we will have heat next weekend. So keep that in your prayers. Praise the Lord. What were you saying, Wayne? Yeah. <laughs> so thanks for everybody for your understanding and your support all this time. Uh, and uh, God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. And as we uh, continue our observance of uh, Black Catholic History Month, uh, this week we want to highlight uh, the servant of God, Mother Mary Lang, who I imagine many of us are very familiar with since she hails right from here in Baltimore. Uh, Mother Lang um, was the foundress of the St. Francis Academy in 1828. Uh, do we have some graduates of the Academy here? Yes, we do. All right. Uh, Mother Lang established that in 1828. It is the longest continuously operating um, African-American Catholic uh, high school in the nation. Were you going to say something? Um, Sister Della Rosa, who just passed last week, uh, is that, that's right, or, um, and uh, she was a classmate of Genevieve's uh, at St. Francis, is that what you, you were classmates? You were classmates, okay. Your first class that graduated from the facility downtown, okay, wonderful. Well, congratulations on that. Um, and as uh, Genevieve mentioned, though, also uh, Mother Lang established, founded the Oblate Sisters of Providence. Uh, that was the year after uh, she started the school. I, I believe the uh, school was founded in 1828, and the Oblates, she made her first vows, got uh, the commission from Rome to start the order in 1829, I believe. Um, and uh, their mother house is located over here in Arbutus. Uh, Mother Mary Lang's uh, remains are entombed there if you ever want to go over to their chapel and to pray before uh, her tomb uh, and to ask her intercession uh, for a favor as we uh, continue to pray for her canonization. Uh, as the foundress of the Oblate Sisters of Providence, Providence was, is a huge part of, of uh, her spirituality, the idea that God will provide, yes, okay, will. that uh, we, we just... Uh, um, need to trust uh, in the Lord and, and the Lord will provide in God's providence. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen? So uh, as we offer this prayer of canonization, it too, uh, like last week, invites you to uh, bring to mind a particular intention or petition that you would like to ask for the intercession of Mother Lang. So we ask you to call to mind that intention as we offer this prayer. Almighty and eternal God, you granted Mother Mary Lang extraordinary trust in your providence. You endowed her with the humility, carriage, and holiness, and an extraordinary sense of service to the poor and sick. You enabled her to found the Oblate Sisters of Providence and provide educational, social, and spiritual ministry, especially to the African-American community. Mother Lang's love for all enabled her to see Christ in each person, and the pain of prejudice and racial hatred never blurred that vision. Deign to raise her to the highest honors of the altar, in order that, through her intercession, more souls may come to a deeper understanding and a more fervent love of you. 
Heavenly Father, glorify your heart by granting also this favor, which we now ask through the intercession of your faithful servant, Mother Mary Lang. Amen. If you'd like a copy of this prayer or would like to learn more about Mother Mary Lang, uh, there will be a link in our online bulletin. Uh, you'll be able to get the prayer and you'll also find out more information about Mother Mary Lang and the efforts for her canonization. Let us stand and pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I want to thank everyone who assisted in this morning's liturgy, and a special thanks to our musicians, to, to Lori for her first time here. Lori, we joined her. Lori's stepping up, let me tell you. Taking <laughs> over our ushers and now a singer. Amen. And to Laura, not to con be confused with Lori, to Laura Hargrove, thank you very much. And Dietrich, as always, we thank you for your leadership in our music ministry. We want to thank uh, all of our ministers uh, who uh, served us today. Uh, and we thank especially our live stream ministry, of course, the stream team who makes all of this possible beyond our four walls. Thanks very much. We pray that you all have a very good and safe week. And we pray that you have a very happy Thanksgiving. And again, we will be a live streaming a mass from uh, the hall at 930 on Thursday morning. Amen. 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 Let us pray now the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.
quick notice, the Daily Word uh, is available in the back now. You can pick the copy up as you leave if you wish. Thank you.